Hello, my name is Julie Godfrey. I'm the Lead Vascular Access Advanced Nurse Practitioner at Broomfield Hospital in Chelmsford in the UK. And thank you to Braun for asking me to come and give this short presentation for the symposium for Wakova. And also thank you for Bo Ringer to help support me to attend um, Wakova this year. So I've been asked to give you a brief 15 minute synopsis of ultrasound guided peripheral intravenous cannulation, a novel tool to enhance patient care. I'll endeavour to do this whilst I know there's quite a lot of content to fit in in 15 minutes. Obviously, we'll have a live QA and we'll be able to discuss some of those areas in more detail, depending on your questions, which I look forward to. So also please note that many of the views and opinions are of my own from my own clinical practice. But my clinical practice is always backed up with evidence based um, literature, etc. So thank you for listening in advance and I look forward to the Q&A session. So ultrasound guided peripheral cannulation. Why should we consider this? Well, we know that over a billion cannulas are inserted each year worldwide. And that's thank you to that fantastic um, audit, global audit that was done by Eva Alexandra and Peter Carr and team um, that showed that 59% of all patients that are admitted to hospital um, will have a can at least one cannula during their stay. Um, and that also, unfortunately, during that time, 12% of patients would um, have some sort of symptom of itis from the line. And in fact, in real um, practice myself, I know that actually one cannula uh, would be great per stay, but I know that in real terms that doesn't always happen. So alongside this, we're also seeing an increased number of patients admitted now who we consider to be divas. So difficult IV access patients, so those that don't have any palpable or visible veins, let alone those that have difficult access due to obesity, diabetes, vessel disease, um, IV drug abuse, um, many other conditions. So this is making our jobs as vascular access nurses and as clinicians much more complicated. And in fact, the INS this year, their fantastic new um, standards that have been released um, do actually encourage us to look at using ultrasound guidance for peripheral can cannulation. So why does this help? Well, this will reduce the number of attempts and the subsequent complications like you can see in this photo. It improves the patient's treatment and prevents those stop start where they're waiting for new cannulas um, that affects their treatment and their experience. Anything to stop them going through the pain and anguish of repeated cannulation. Alongside this, we all know how important vessel health preservation is. And so this is goes part and parcel really with the guidelines that are produced. We also need to reduce the need for more invasive devices as part of vessel health preservation. And in fact, Millington et al and Murata and Bowers have both done studies um, to show this. So briefly, just looking at the UK Vessel Health and Preservation Tool, thank you to Carol Hallam and the Infection Prevention Society, and in association with many other bodies, you can see at the bottom there, um, have come up with this fantastic guideline that we use as our holy grail. So it really helps us um, make a decision to make sure the patient gets the right device at the right time for them. It also helped those that are not used to doing peripheral vein assessment um, to do so, to look at their anticipation type of therapy to see what type of device they might need and then ongoing with the daily evaluation. Um, we also use it to back up our decision making um, if we choose not to place a device um, when we need to try and prove why. So unfortunately, thinking about all of those cannulas we know that are being inserted, 50% of the short length standard catheters fail within 24 hours. That's a lot of cannulas. Um, and in fact, this one on the right here, unfortunately, was a patient who had a vancomycin infiltration from a standard um, catheter and ended up needing plastic works. And this is just the sort of thing that we want to try and avoid. So the advantages of ultrasound guided peripheral intravenous cannulation, obviously it gives you direct visualization of the veins for accurate assessment. And then we can look at a catheter vein ratio because we know just how important it is to make sure there's good flow around 
and the cannula or the catheter to avoid thrombosis. Um, also, it gives us direct visualisation of the tip into the device, uh, to tip into the vessel. Um, and when I'm talking about ultrasound guidance, I don't mean just using your ultrasound probe to find the vein, drop the probe and then insert the cannula in the normal way. I'm talking about direct visualisation of the tip into the vessel the whole way. So using uh, ultrasound guidance the whole way. That means you have the whole length of the cannula with really good purchase into the vessel. Actually, we find that patients have less pain um, when we do this. And I would imagine it's probably because we're in the right place and we're not touching other structures that we shouldn't. It also, once ultrasound guidance is learned, it saves time and it saves money from those failed cannulas. Every time a cannula fails, it costs around £4.07 pence and the equal in euros and dollars. And that's probably gone up just whilst I've been talking to you, let alone the clinical time that's lost and the clinicians trying to cannulate these patients. And the cost to the patient is astronomical. Who wants to have all of these pain and potential complications? And actually, if we really think about it, this is avoidable harm because we know that we have the adjuncts available now to try and avoid this. So what do we do about device selection? Well, the INS, yet again, great advice, have talked about a long peripheral intravenous catheter and the Vessel Health Preservation Guidelines talk about using ultrasound guidance. And so actually we should choose the smallest gauge device possible um, when they've got more than five days worth of th IV therapy um, prescribed. In our um, institution, we've chosen to use the Braun Intercran Safety Deep Access device, the 22 or 20 gauge. This is double length of normal catheter and it means also we need to get at least two thirds of the length of this into the vein, so allowing for depth if you have a patient that is obese for instance, um, and at the end well is up to 30 days um, because of the catheter material that it's made from, but also because um, you've got good purchase into the vein there. So it's noted that there's a 72% increased indwell time compared to short catheters and Bar et al 2019, and the references are at the end, demonstrated increased clinical indwell time also. And in my short time in developing our ultrasound guidance um, cannulation team, we're noticing the same. It's less invasive, there's less skill required, there's less risks than with central venous access devices and it's cost effective. So what have I discovered? Well, if I give you a small insight, we've just developed two small teams that will cannulate for us when required in an emergency or when difficult IV access is noted. And um, they are based within the trigger response team and the out of hours team. I've had develop, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a robust training program with set protocols, a tight standard operating procedure to protect them so that they aren't asked to do anything out of their scope of practice and a diva escalation algorithm from them. There are many diva scales being developed, but this is more of an escalation um, algorithm so they know who to go to next. It does require time and equipment to train. There has to be ongoing assessment of those that are inserting over the longer term and evaluation and auditing, not just of the person that's placing, but also of the device itself. I want to know live numbers of infiltration, infection, dislodgement, how long it's indwelled for. So we have a live database that runs from the day of insertion to the day of removal. And hopefully I'll be able to use this to present my data um, in the near future. It's quicker, it reduces CVADs, definitely we have less referrals and it's better for the patient and our budget. The practitioners have found that the intracan safety needle tip um, easy to visualise um, because it's etched, it's really echogenic. Um, and once the ultrasound skill is mastered, they find it really easy. It's also really easy to manoeuvre. So if you've somebody that's been used to placing pick and midlines and using a modified Seldinger technique, you would do it at steep angle. You can still do this with your probe and your needle and flatten out. Or if you're used to cannulating, you can just use it in the same position as you would normally. They're easy to secure, uh, stabilise and clean. They're great for patients that require contrast media for CT or MRI because they're allow fast flow rates. Um, and again, we talked about indwell time as long as a VIP score is zero and it's still clinically indicated. 
For me as a manager, I like the safety needle um, activation that's passive on removal because it means I know that there's less chance of needle stick injuries for my team. Care and maintenance, something I'm really passionate about because it doesn't all just start and finish with insertion. It's about the longer term and making sure this lasts for the patient. Currently, we're doing care and maintenance for these so I can observe them closely with a view to cascading that to general um, ward um, nurses. Um, you require an appropriate securement device. We currently use the IV Ultra because that's the one that works well for us. Um, the needle-free IV access device extension set, obviously, um, to reduce risk of infection from microbial ingress and also blood spillage for the patient and the practitioner. We recommend ANTT, obviously, for all accessing and strict aseptic technique for the weekly dressing and maintenance. We use a chlorhexidine impregnated patch, but you could use a dressing with a gel chlorhexidine. That's just the choice of our institution because that's what we've used for pick and midlines. And we're trying to make the dressing appear the same so it's easier. So obviously you need to refer to INS standards of practice, EPIC-3 and your local IP policies. And in fact, there was a Cochrane review in 2015 that showed we need further trials of dressings and securement devices, including robust cost effective analysis to help us make these decisions. So in conclusion, you need clear protocols for these DIVA patients and for the ultrasound guided cannulation and its training. It's essential to have ongoing care and maintenance in line with evidence-based practice and the INS standards, accurate documentation throughout with VIT monitoring, regular audit and evaluation, of both the, the team's insertions and the device. And again, we really have to put the patient first and foremost and have vessel health preservation um, at the centre of this. So my take home message, use ultrasound guidance with a long length peripheral catheter to move from this horrible picture on the left to needle tip visualisation in the vessel to this final placement on the right. Thank you so much for listening and I look forward to your questions.